back to the scandals. If you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you watch television or you go on the internet or you read the newspapers, you know, when is it that you start shouting or crying or whatever and says, you know, it's, it's impossible that this is happening in, in this Western, free, prosperous society? Well, I think in a way what's perhaps been revealed recently by the collapse of the model, the neoliberal model, the collapse, the, the Wall Street mm -hmm. uh, the thing that was being signified that stands for a much bigger catastrophe in a way, okay. that's based also on a kind of delusional kind of thinking that we've all been caught up in. It's not just that one can't divide us and them. In a way, there was a kind of logic that drew everyone into it that has perhaps now been exposed in its delusional aspects, we'll, we'll, we'll which, it, which of course the media also often play into in terms of the world that, we're, that represents the, the crisis. No, no, but, but that's one schedule we will, mm. scandal we, we definitely have to address. Uh, Rory, is there any scan scandal you can point at? It's a real scandal that this is happening in our society. A very interesting one over the last 10 years, which fascinates me from an advertising background, is that, in a sense, what you've got to be really afraid of is those vessels of persuasion which aren't ostensibly persuasive. Advertising and propaganda, people understand there's an ulterior motive mm -hmm. and they have a certain resistance to them or at least a certain cynicism towards them. There's a very peculiar assumption that pervaded the entire Western world. I mean, it's worth remembering that the banks were totally irresponsible lenders but they also had completely irresponsible borrowers on the other side. I don't know if you can actually put the blame entirely squarely in one place or the other. And there's a very peculiar narrative which pervaded all news media, which is that property wasn't a form of consumption, it was an asset, and that a rise in property prices was portrayed as universally good news mm -hmm. on the news. And that always struck me as strange. No one actually portrays a rise in petrol prices as great news to those people who have half a tank full of petrol in their tank and for whom their car has suddenly become slightly more valuable. We see it as a cost of living. And there was something very peculiar there if you looked at sort of, you know, endless programs that suggested the highest end of man was to install decking outside his house and to improve his own home. And what was peculiar about that is it wasn't a point of view, it just became a universal assumption. And that's when these ideas seem to be actually most dangerous. So, but I mean, it is worth, it is worth making that point that we, we, we talk about irresponsible lending and we're absolutely right to do so and we're absolutely right to criticise the neoclassical economic model which is a psychologically blind model of human action uh, which did quite a lot of harm, but uh, there were peculiar behaviours in other places as well. Um, Roger, uh, uh, um, so far uh, both uh, Daniel and Rory are, are talking about the scandal of, of mm. a kind of economic model. Mm. Are there other scandals, scandals or, or is it, what, what, what would you say, this is the real écrasé les femmes, I mean, what's, what's... Yes, I, I think the, I guess my view is not very fashionable. I, I think that the real scandal of Western civilization today is atheism. Uh, and uh, I know that um, <coughs> some people might say, well, there you are, more power to scandal in that case. Uh, just as I think the real scandal of the Middle East today is theism of an irrational kind. Uh, and I, I've always hoped that uh, we could hold on to our inherited sense of the sacred without going over the top, uh, as our Muslim friends do. Uh, and um, it seemed to me for a while in my youth that this could even be achieved. Uh, but uh, I recognize that it hasn't been achieved. And all these things that have just been said by um, Rory and Daniel, uh, the, the growth of, uh, if you like, of contagious irresponsibility, mm -hmm. not only in economics, but in, in personal life uh, and social life, all this, in my view, proceeds from that fundamental loss of the sense that some things are sacred. Good. We'll get back to that as well. Agnes, <coughs> what's... Now, the world has always been a dangerous place and remained a dangerous place. There are always scandals in the world, and there are scandals today as well. But what is a scandal, what is not, is also be determined by our own perception, whether we see something as a scandal. And in this respect, I would say that our world is not that bad. Because for us, for example, genocide is a scandal. Mass murder is a scandal. For Homeros or for Cipi Africanos, there was no scandal. 
Obviously, if you conquer the land, you have to destroy it. Everyone has to be murdered. That was fine. That was, that was heroism, not scandal. So I think the, if we include in the problems of the scandal certain things, which our forebears did not consider as scandals, I don't believe in progress, but it is, it is partially a kind of progress in comparison to the 20th century, which was, in my mind, the greatest scandal of modernity. With all these totalitarian societies, with all these millions and millions of corpses in Europe, in comparison with this dictatorship, with this mass murder, we are not living at the present moment in a scandalous world, although there are many scandals in this world. Alain. Irrespective of uh, uh, um, Agnes moved, if I may say so, from um, uh, um, communism in your, in your youth, when you were a student of, of Lukács, to somebody who is, uh, 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 you no longer consider yourself a communist, do you? Of course, <laughs> of course not. Of course, when, at the time when I considered myself as a communist, I believed in the Paris manuscripts of Karl Marx. That is the unity between Gattungswesen and individual person, mm -hmm. which is a total utopian, uh, maybe not just um, uh, unrealizable, but also in my present view, undesirable. But I believed in this, but never believed in real existing socialism. That's in a totally different fashion. Never, and I never used the term Marxism Leninism, as was Marxist, but never a Leninist. Because Lenin discovered, Lenin invented the totalitarian party. Everyone imitated him, he invented the totalitarian party. So I would not call, my, never did not call myself Marxist Lenin, but Marxist, yes, because I had my own Marx. This Marx is very utopian, like your Marx. Yeah, it was very utopian. It was beautiful idea and conception, which I still believe a wonderful dream, but I don't think it has political reality. Um, Alain, Rusen, an, an, uh, um, one of the books you publish is The Communist Hypothesis, where you uh, 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 argue uh, that communism is still a good idea. Um, from that perspective, what do you see as the big scandals of the society you live in? Uh, I think the, the, the most important uh, scandal <coughs> in the world today, but not only today, from the beginning of history, in fact, <coughs> is that we perfectly know that uh, uh, practically all men and women in the world are able of doing something, of create something, of thinking something, and this uh, ability uh, is uh, practically uh, reduced to near nothing mm -hmm. for a great majority of human beings today. It's not a question only of poverty, of oppression, and so on. It's a more radical question, which is that uh, the humanity is uh, very distant from its proper possibility mm -hmm. of uh, creation and of uh, life and of uh, existence. And maybe in the contemporary capitalism, we can clearly see that uh, millions of millions of people are, from the point of view of uh, capitalism itself, uh, no useful at all. Mm -hmm. They are uh, practically nothing. In fact, <laughs> and so uh, that is the scandal. The scandal is when uh, millions of people are considered practically as nothing, not only in their existence, mm -hmm. but uh, in their capacities, in their possibilities. So I think, la like Marx, in some sense, that you are now too in a prehistoric sequence mm -hmm. of humanity. <laughs> and we must uh, begin uh, the history of mankind, uh, really. And communism was only, for Marx, the name of this process, the name of this possibility, mm -hmm. the name of the true beginning of history after many centuries of uh, destruction, uh, uh, struggle, uh, class struggle, uh, revolution, and so on. And uh, for him, uh, capitalism was just the form, just before mm -hmm. 
the possibility of a new beginning. And I think we, 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 we must uh, recognize the truth of this idea because we can observe that uh, the capitalism which is today uh, at the scale of uh, the planet mm -hmm. uh, cannot be uh, uh, the construction of a future. 